In the previous video, we've turned our data into a data table and done some analysis on top of that. So what we want to do now is actually make our planning. We want to make a schedule for what teacher teaches what course on what day of the week. So ultimately, we're going to want something like this. But let's start with an intermediary step first. We have here a list of what courses are teach on what day of the week. So we want to have in our planning, initially we don't have the names yet, we just want to have X's on the spots where we have a course and empty spots or dashes on the places where we do not have a course for a given level. So we can do that with a function that we have already seen in the past, namely the find function. There we go. We can use the find function to search for a value in a string, as we've seen before. So we're going to find this one in the list of all the courses that we have on Monday. And we have found it. If we execute this formula, you see that indeed there is a one in this string on the first spot, so on one. And here we have to add a dollar, of course, because if we are going to drag the function down, then we want to stay focused, stay pointing on the first line. And what you see now is that in case we do not find the one, we get an error value. And we can catch that error value with a function called isError. So we can ask Excel, is this formula resulting in an error, yes or no? Or I should say true or false, because that will be the result of the formula. You see in the cases where we have found the one, we get a false. Now we can slap an if on top of that. We can say, if we get an error, well then we want to have a dash. And if we do not get an error, then we want to have an X, so that we get Xs on all the spots where we indeed have the given course on the given level, day. So, almost there, we can drag this formula to the right, and then we have our formula. Unfortunately, we have forgotten something. Again, another dollar. They are so annoying and so easy to forget, right? So if we add a dollar to the formula, it will work. We can drag it to the right, and indeed we have got our function. But I do not particularly like this formula a lot. If you look at it, you have the one dollar here and the other dollar there. I'm pretty sure that if you look at this formula tomorrow or maybe in a week or three, you will look at this like, I don't really remember what is going on here. So we can make this formula a lot easier by using, I guess you can guess this, a named range. So if we take this first row of the spreadsheet and change that into a named range, let's call this horse level, horizontal levels. Then there's a special trick that we can use if we use a named range like this. What we can do is we can refer to that named range from a lower row. Let's have a look at how that looks like. If we just enter into this cell is equal to the named range, what we actually get is the intersection of the column that this cell is in and the row that represents the named range. So without doing anything, no cell references or no calculation, we're just pointing at the named range, we get the value at the intersection. And we can copy this down, no ugly dollars needed, and you'll see that you get the value from the named range. And if you go outside of it, then you get an error again. And we can use this little trick to beautify the formula that we just had. Let's have a look at how that looks like. So here again, in slow motion, I will show you what we've done. Because this might take you a while for your brain to really understand how the intersection works. So if you refer from a cell to a given named range, what you will get as a result is the intersection of the column you are in and the named range. So we can use that in this function. Let's see how that goes. So we can get rid of that ugly little dollar. Let's remove it right away and we can replace it by a reference to the named range. It's a lot easier to read. You don't need to think about the dollars. You don't need to think about the copying. You can just say, I'm pointing up to the horizontal levels named range. And this trick does not only work within one worksheet, it also works between worksheets. So if we go back to this lessons worksheet and call this column levels, we can also use it from this worksheet. So if we refer now back to the worksheet, 
No formulas needed, no functions needed, just a reference. You see that in the same fashion, you get the intersection of the named range in the one worksheet and the row you are in currently. So we can use that as well. Here, we're going to say, I want to find the horizontal level in the levels. So your formula is a lot more readable and you can just navigate the named ranges that are in the worksheet if you have forgotten where they are by using the drag down and selecting the named range within the formula. So from ugly dollars to readable functions with named ranges.